Hello everybody. We are going to do um, one more recorded lecture today about um, a couple of different reimbursement methods. We're going to roll them into one lecture because they're so closely related. Um, we're going to be stemming from chapter 7 in your textbook today. Um, before you can fully understand what I'm talking about, you'll need to make sure that you've read in chapter 7 the section on the resource base relative value scale because we are going to be dealing with that form of reimbursement. Y'all are lucky today. I have makeup on. I had to run to town so I'm not quite as scary. And I actually got my hair chopped off. I don't know if you can see it, but I have no hair. Y'all bald. But that's okay because it's summer and that's what you're supposed to do. Um, anyway, so we're going to talk first about the resource based relative value scale and then we're going to roll that into how that affects the fee schedule. Now, um, to start off, there are three elements to the resource based relative value scale. Um, we're going to start with the unit called the RVU. Um, every RVU is comprised of three components. These components are work, practice expense, which we're going to designate, designate as PE, and malpractice, which we are going to designate as MP. Okay? Um, these three components make up every single RVU. Now, before we go any further, let's take a step back and let's look at um, what um, the RVU actually is. Every CPT code has an RVU, okay, a relative value unit. Just like the DRG, the more severe the procedure, the higher the RVU is going to be. If it's a lower RVU, that's going to indicate that there is a lower sense of severity. So the RVU, again, being a relative scale, actually kind of compares procedures to one another in terms of severity. All right, again, three elements make up every RVU. Work, practice expense, and malpractice. Let's talk about what each one of those things actually means. Okay, work is the work put forth by the physician. We're talking about the physician's effort, the physician's time, and the amount of decision making that is involved for the physician because obviously, the common cold is going to be a little bit easier for the physician than, say, a cancer case. So, we will take into consideration the physician's work. The second element is practice expense. Again, we're going to call it PE. The practice expense is, um, indicates all the expenses that are required to run the practice. Rent, the light bill, the water bill, some supplies, some of your staff salaries, these are going to be considered your practice expense. Now remember, the physician salary is not included in PE. This is more of like the nurses or your office staff. I like to think of this as overhead because many times these expenses cannot be traced back to one particular procedure. So they're kind of, I've got a cat trying to get in front of the computer screen. Um, these are actually considered kind of an overhead expense because they are in general and can't be traced back to one particular procedure. Alright, the final element is malpractice. Um, we all know what malpractice is. That's the cost of insurance for the physician for those cases of malpractice that they might incur. So, um, malpractice is, you know, very simply just the cost of their malpractice insurance. Now, um, on page 158 in your textbook, there's actually a table down at the bottom. Um, of the page that kind of gives us an idea of how we need to calculate these um, relative value scale problems. Um, we're going to take each one of those elements, work, practice expense, and malpractice, and they're each going to have a value. Okay, Each value will be multiplied by what's called the GPCI. The GPCI is the Geographic Price Cost Index. Um, I think that's what that means. Let me make sure before I start lying to you. Oh, excuse me. Ge I think that's other wrong. Geographic Practice Cost Index. Okay. What this um, GPCI does is it actually compares the cost across the country. For example, it's probably cheaper to hire a nurse in Arkansas than it is to hire a nurse in, say, Los Angeles because of the, the market, you know. Supply and demand will dictate um, that those prices 
are not the same across the country. Just like rent, take rent expense. It's more expensive to rent. I mean, let's look at just in Arkansas. It's more expensive to rent, say, in Fayetteville than it is down here in Monticello. So we have to take into consideration the varying prices across the geographic region. And that's what the GPCI is actually going to do. It's going to put everybody kind of on a level playing field in terms of geography. All right, so we're going to take every one of these elements. So work is going to have a value, practice expense is going to have a value, and malpractice is going to have a value, okay? Then for every one of those elements as well, you're going to have a GPCI value. So you'll take your work value and you'll times it by your work GPCI. Okay? Then we're going to take our practice expense or our PE value and we're going to multiply it by our PE GPCI. And then we're going to take our malpractice expense value and we're going to multiply it by the MP GPCI. All right, once we've done all of that multiplication and I've actually written this down on your scratch paper that I'm going to give you. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Right here. We're taking our work RBU times our work GPCI, our PE RBU multiplied by our PE GPCI, and our MP RBU multiplied by our MP GPCI. Okay, we're going to do all that multiplication, and then we're going to add each one of those elements together to get what's called the total RBU. Okay, the total RBU is then going to be multiplied by a conversion factor. The conversion factor is set annually by CMS and it indicates the value of each procedure, okay? So there's going to be one conversion factor for everything. We're going to use the conversion factor and multiply it by the, um, the total RBU we get from that big long formula. And um, that, when we do that multiplication, that's actually going to give us the allowable. Now if you look in your textbook, and I'm going to use the textbook as our sample package today. Um, look at table 7.4 down at the bottom of your page. I know this sounds a little confusing, but it's actually quite simple to do. Look at how they've got this broken down. They broke it down by element. See the work value, the practice expense, or the PE, and the malpractice expense, or the MP. Alright, notice it has the RBU in that column. Like example, work value says 0.88 with the GPCI of 1. So we're going to multiply 0.88 times 1 and we get 0.88. All right, notice how that just flows across the table. That's kind of how we're going to do these problems too in our work. Our practice expense, we put we have a 0.83 and we multiply it by the GPCI which was 0 0.925 and we get a geographic adjustment of 0 0.76775. All right, and you can see the same thing was done for malpractice. 0 0.05 times 0 0.634 equals 0 0.0317 and again I'm just reading across the table um, for that geographic adjustment. Now if you notice under my practice it says sum. What we're doing to all of those elements we're adding up that geographic adjustment column the 0 0.88, the 0 0.76775 and the 0 0.0317 are all being added up and you see it gives us a sum of 1.67945. You following me? Then if you notice over in the, um, the final column it says adjusted payment conversion factor and it says 36.0666 36 I'll get it right in a minute. You see that? We're going to take that sum total that we got from adding together the geographically adjusted elements and we're going to multiply it by $36.0666 to get a total adjusted allowance of $60.57. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, that geograph um, that adjusted amount after you've done the conversion factor, that $60.57 becomes your allowable. Okay? If we're working this in a problem, we know where to plug in the allowable. So, we're going to use that um, number that we calculate there into, we're going to plug that number into our allowable spot and then just finish out our um, problem according to the information that we're given, such as patient liability and all of that. So we actually use the resource based relative value scale to 
um, to, to actually calculate an allowable. Now, every, like I said before, every CPT code has these values attached to it. We don't usually see it. It's usually kind of done um, in the background, so we don't really see the um, these numbers in the forefront, okay? However, they are useful to know because because they are relative, they are comparing themselves to one another through their values, okay? So those with the higher RVUs are going to be worth more money to the physician because you can see through the example in your book how the RVU in turn translates into reimbursement. So um, I do want you to be able to work these problems and there is one of these in Blackboard. Um, I will tell you that because this is dealing with CPT codes, we are dealing with outpatient procedures. So this is an outpatient form of reimbursement. It is also considered a fee-for-service kind of reimbursement because it's dealing with every single charge. Um, every single charge is calculated on its merit. So every charge is considered in the resource-based relative value scale. Now, here's the good part. Also attached in Blackboard, I'm going to give you a sample fee schedule. Um, the fee schedule is um, basically, we, we really like fee schedules <laughs> because what the fee schedule does is it compiles the RVUs and does all of this background work for every CPT code so that we don't have to do this math unless absolutely necessary. So instead of having to go through every element like work PE and MP, it just gives you straight up an allowable amount that you will plug into the allowable slot. So yes, there is a shortcut, but me being hateful like I am, I want you to have to learn how to work the um, problems from the standpoint of the resource-based relative value scale. I will also, however, give you some problems that just deal with the fee schedule. And if I tell you that we're doing CPT code 71010, you'll just read across the fee schedule and you'll say, oh, there's the allowable for that. So these problems are relatively simple. Um, again, the column will say allowable. So you will take that allowable amount and you'll plug it into the allowable slot on your, um, in your formula. And, um, and you'll do the rest of the math as um, indicated by your problem. Now, this brings up a point because, you know, I had you do some research about Medicare and what the Medicare um, patient, liabilities, uh, patient liability amounts were for 2014. Sometimes I won't quite out give you, you have to think about this, I won't give you the coinsurance amount on a Medicare problem. Why is that? Because through your research, you should have found that the, um, Medicare patient has to pay automatically a 20% coinsurance. So if I, if I say it's a Medicare outpatient, you should know, bam, that's a 20% coinsurance that they're going to have without me having to state it in the problem. So keep that in mind. Medicare outpatients have a 20% coinsurance and that's going to be really important in these problems. Again, because we are dealing with outpatients, if I say it's a Medicare patient, then you know that it is a 20% coinsurance straight up, okay? Um, I don't really have anything as far as scratch paper. I have a, I do have a little something. I will attach this to Blackboard, I guess. Um, and I will try to get you a little bit of a sample fee schedule as well. Um, I'm not going to put a whole one up there, but I will put a, <coughs> excuse me, a piece of one up there for you to reference. Um, make sure you work the problems again because these problems are giving me feedback as far as what you are understanding or not. As always, if you have any questions, make sure you contact me. Um, text me, call me, email me, whatever, and let's get this worked out. This is our last unit before the final, so we really want to make sure that you're understanding the information that's being presented to you. Um, if you'll notice on our lecture part, chapter seven was our last test. Chapters eight and nine, you will get your first exposure to that on the final. Now, um, I hope you've been working those study guides that I've been giving you because there's some good information on that and it will really help you fine tune what you need to be looking over for your test as well as your final exam. So, uh, make sure you are um, working on those study guides that are presented to you in Blackboard. If you have any questions for me, again, make sure you call me. Um, I will be around and good luck as you complete um, as you complete this class. 
Um, we will talk to you guys later. If you need anything, give me a holler. Thanks. Have a good day.